I believe this dude is one of the best public speakers on the planet. Always gets me excited. He spoke at the most recent 10X for about 14 minutes and just unbelievable. He took us to church on a Sunday morning at that event. Unbelievable job. Please welcome to the virtual stage. My good buddy, unbelievable speaker, and someone I'm trying to emulate so I can be a better public speaker myself. You get to see him in Vegas, and now you see him on virtual, Mr. Tim Story. What a privilege to be part of this conference again. I got to do it before, but now I get to do it again. So to Cody and to Lauren Askins, thank you guys for inviting me and your team. I noticed that when I was with you guys in person, you guys had an amazing team that really cared about all the people that were there. And I know that your vision is to see other people's vision come to pass. So we're talking about this great conference, the 8% Nation Conference. And once again, what a privilege to be a part. And today I wanna to talk about um, getting the right breaks in life. Because I'm convinced that there are so many people that do good things, but it seems as though they don't get the right breaks that they need. So I'm going to start with a story that some of you are familiar with, and that is the story of George Foreman. Uh, George Foreman was a very good boxer, had come from uh, humble beginnings. And it's an interesting thing about George is that um, he was a very angry person. You know, he talks about in his speeches now and even his book about his life that he was just an angry person. Some of you remember that George Foreman fought Muhammad Ali, he fought Joe uh, Frazier, and you know, he's a great boxer. But one day he was boxing uh, and he fought a, a competitor where he was expected to win in over 10 to 1 odds, and he lost. Um, according to his story, after the fight, he was in the back and he felt like he had a, like he had a visitation. Uh, actually, he says from God, and that he felt like God said to him, don't be angry George anymore, that you're going to be happy George. Well, uh, it actually happened in his life where he started to make the choices to become happy George. Okay? You say, all right, Tim, what's that have to do with me? Everything. Because it was many years later that he was approached to do a grill, a grill a grill that would cook hamburgers, it would cook steaks, it could cook chicken, it could cook many things. And they called it the George Foreman Grill. Now thank God for women in our lives, whether it's your mother, your girlfriend, your sister, your wife, because sometimes a woman has a perspective that a man can't see. So George Foreman's wife uh, saw the grill and said, George, I, 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 I kind of like the idea, but I don't like the grill. So I think that in order for you to do this project, we need to, we need to say no to the talent fee that they want to give you and say, if you let us put some of our ideas on this grill and become a partner of the grill, then maybe we'll do it. Well, knowing the inside story, this is exactly what took place. They wanted to pay George a certain amount of money that I know the amount, okay? It was not large, just to be talent. George's wife said, not good enough for us. We want to be partners. Well, here's what happened. They retooled the George Foreman Grill, and over a period of time, the George Foreman Grill, from the beginning of the grill to now, to present day, has sold over 100 million grills worldwide. So let's just suppose that he only made $4 per grill. You can do the math. That's a whole lot of money. What do I call that? That is a break. Now, there is a proverb that says this, unrelenting disappointment can leave you heart sick. 
And I really want to deal with this because this is a lot of my strength. I've spent so many years teaching on the comeback, uh, now about 30 years. And as you know, many of you, that I work with a lot of entertainers, over 300 entertainers at present. And so many of the people that I work with, if they're not in a setback now, usually when they came to me, they were in a setback in one area of their life or another. So here's what I find, that this proverb is real. Unrelenting disappointment can leave you heart sick. Now, unrelenting means this, unyielding, steadfast, with determination. A lot of us have been facing in our lives unrelenting disappointment, mostly with what's happening with COVID-19. I know friends that are in the gym business, as in physical fitness, of over 100 gyms that had to close down. I know some of the biggest restaurant owners around the world closing down the restaurants. People who speak for a living, not speaking. Uh, close people to my life, their jobs shut down in the entertainment world. All of us have been hit by COVID-19. Now, so unrelenting disappointment, which means it just keeps coming, it's unyielding, steadfast, with determination, can leave you heart sick. Now, the heart is the center of your core. And this is so important for you to hear because it is going to still be a great year for you. You're still going to live an utmost life. That life will call you to upward moments in downward times. Do I still believe this? Absolutely. But we have to deal with the disappointment. We can't just act like it's not there. We can't pretend that it's just going to go away. you got to deal with the disappointment. So unrelenting disappointment can leave you heart sick. So the heart is the center of your core. And the reason you have to get your heart healed is because, watch this, courage comes from your heart. Peace comes from your heart. Joy comes from your heart. Gratitude comes from your heart. Generosity comes from your heart. Faith comes from your heart. So if you have been disappointed and disappointed and disappointed and your heart is sick, then it's hard to manifest all these amazing things. So I believe that some of you, you are ready to manifest amazing things, but we have to deal with your core. We have to deal with your heart. The word sick there means to be ill, to be ailing, to be down, okay? So unrelenting disappointment can leave you heart sick. But in this proverb it says, but, comma, a sudden good break can turn your life around. So I was doing some research for you guys and I found out a little more on this word sudden. It actually means unexpected, unforeseen, immediate, quick, hurried, wouldn't that be so awesome that out of nowhere, something unexpected, unforeseen, immediately, quick, hurried, came and gave you a sudden good break. Just like George got the George Foreman grill, don't you think life is big enough to give you the right kind of break? Now, I'm going to give you something that I think is super, super cool. And I want you to really catch this. I was at a baseball game. I love, I love sports. And I was watching the LA Dodgers. And I was about the third row right by the dugout, right, right behind the dugout, third row. And I ended up sitting next to a retired uh, medical doctor. He had been a heart surgeon from the area of Santa Monica. Very classy man, must have been mid-70s. Very classy wife who happened to be sitting next to me. So she asked me what I did and we started dialoguing and she was very interested in what I did for a profession. And so as we were talking, we were going at it about life and turning setbacks to comebacks and, and celebrities, etc. 
True story. Don't forget we're at a baseball game. We are on the first base side. Right hand hitter, boom, hits the ball, veers off, it goes towards where we are sitting three rows back. Out of nowhere, this lady who I later find out is 72 years of age, classy <laughs> lady from a good neighborhood, reaches under the seat, okay, in front of her, pulls out a baseball glove, and goes bounding for the ball, and misses this time. So, I had been talking to her for about four innings, so I could not stop laughing. <laughs> I was with a, a, a male friend of mine, a businessman, and uh, he was laughing, I was laughing, I could not stop laughing. And I said, Miss, what in the world are you doing? And then the doctor spoke up and he said, oh, she has been doing this for years. She brings her baseball glove to every game because her season uh, ticket holders for the Dodgers. And I, you know, because I'm curious, I said, I said, about how many balls have you ever caught? And she says, well, my record is 13. I said, you caught 13 foul balls over the season in one, in one year. And she says, yeah, but I, I do usually about 9, 10, or 11 balls. And, and then the doctor teased, and he says, yeah, because people feel sorry for you, for you and get out of the, your way. And I thought, nevertheless, she, she gets, catches the balls. So here's my point. In order for her to catch that foul ball, number one, she had to be in the right position. Number two, she had to be, she had to be prepared. She brought her baseball glove every single game. So good, guys. Number one, she had to be in the right position. Had she been sitting way in the top, okay, not the right position. Secondly, she had to bring her baseball glove every game. She had to be prepared. Number three, and this is so important, and I'll get into this today, she had to have the right posture. And I'll never forget, even though she was talking to me, she had one eye on the game. She was talking to me, one eye on the game. She had to have the right posture. Disappointment, if you're not careful, it'll give you the wrong posture. Many times I'll say to somebody, how are you doing? Uh, I'm doing okay. How's your wife? Uh, she's doing okay. How are your kids doing? I'm okay. Uh, uh, they're okay. H how is your job doing? Uh, it it's okay. And what's happened is they found themselves in what I call the land of okay. This lady was in the right position. Secondly, she was prepared, brought the glove every game. Thirdly, she had the right posture. And fourthly, she was patient. I believe that big breaks are coming your way. Why? Because you've heard me teach this before. It's called the law of the harvest. When you plow the ground and you plant the seed and you water the seed, what's going to happen? You're going to get the harvest. So you right now that are watching me, You've been plowing, 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 planting, 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 watering, watering, watering. You better start looking that payday is on its way. But first, I got to deal with your disappointment because you're going to miss it if you're not in the right position, if you're not prepared, if you do not have the right posture, and if you're not patient. I'm trying to tell you guys, I've seen so many people miss big opportunities because they were in a downward spiral and didn't realize that a big break was trying to knock on their door. Let me give you an example. There are three D's that usually happen with disappointment. Number one, people become downcast. And you've seen that before where people just are downcast and you see them in their job, they're, they're, they're downcast or in their relationships, they're downcast. The second thing, and this is very important today, is they become dispirited. 
So to be dispirited actually means, watch this, to almost just vacuum cleaner out or take out or drain out the spirit of a person. So when you are dispirited, it's as though disappointment has sucked out the strength of your spirit. Deep stuff. So three Ds of disappointment. Number one, downcast. Number two, dispirited. And here we go today. Number three, people get discouraged. To be discouraged is to be disheartened. Number two, to be dismayed. Number three, to be deflated. I love sports, so therefore you're going to get some sports analogies sometimes. I remember one time as a kid, we wanted to go play basketball. It must have been about 11, and I had a nice uh, indoor-outdoor leatherish basketball, and uh, I grabbed it from my garage, and without even paying attention that it wasn't pumped up correctly, I got on my bicycle, my Schwinn bicycle, rode to the school, there was three other guys we were going to play together with Timmy Story's ball. And the first dribble I tried to take, watch, the ball went plump. <laughs> so without checking if there was air in the ball, I got on my Schwinn, went all the way to the school, and then there was no air in the ball. Why? Because it had been deflated. So some of you, listen to me, Disappointment has made you downcast, dispirited, and discouraged. Discouraged can make you disheartened, dismayed, and also deflated. Dismayed, what do you mean by that? Dismayed people, that even when optimism comes, ah, they shrug, they roll their eyes, they fold their arms, because they feel like, I tried that. I tried that before. I, I, I tried that. It did not work. So I want to say this. Unrelenting disappointment leaves you heart sick, but a sudden good break can turn your life around. What if, what if your miracle is in motion? What if while you're feeling the sting of your setback that life is preparing your comeback? What if Something huge is about to happen in your life and you are going downward when something upward is about to happen. Okay, don't ever forget this. When somebody is sick, they go singular. Okay, I don't feel good. When somebody feels well, they go plural. They want to help people. They want to heal the world. Okay, so I believe that Unrelenting disappointment leaves you heart sick, but a sudden good break can turn your life around. Now, I'm going to teach this for a few more minutes. What is a break, Tim, story? It's an opportunity. What is a break, Tim, story? It's an opening. What is a break, Tim, story? It's a possibility. Sorry, got to give you one more sports. <laughs> analogy and illustration. My friend Eric Dickerson, who's in the Hall of Fame, he was a running back. I said to him, Eric, as a running back, when you're carrying the ball, I said, when the linemen are, are blocking, how much room do you need to get through that hole when you're running to get some space to get past the defenders? He says, Tim, I've never been asked this in my life. This is such a great question. He said, I literally need about that much room. I literally need about that much room. He said, so those blockers are fighting and, and, and going against the defense with everything they have to try to give the running back this much space so they can come through the break. Life is trying to give you this much space for you to get through the break. I'm trying to tell you, I've seen it in so many of my actor friends. They got this much space. Do you know that even with Jennifer Aniston, with Friends, they only thought that that show 
would only go so far, but they were relentless in the first season. They all got together as young actors and talked about, let's work, you know, like this thing is gonna be gigantic. And they got together, they banded together, and you could still watch Friends Monday through Friday. It changed their lives forever. The same thing with Jerry Seinfeld. That life changed his life forever. All you need is a break, okay? To get a break through. Again, a break is an opportunity, an opening, and a possibility, all right? So let's close with this. Unrelenting disappointment can leave you heart sick. All right, so how do I deal with that, Tim Story? Number one, let it out. Let it out. Tell somebody about it. Share it with me, show it with Cody, share it with somebody. Share it. Hey, I'm disappointed. Things did not work out the way I thought they would. Don't share it with everybody. You don't have to take it to social media, but share it with someone who cares that can be your power partner. Every one of us needs people that we can partner with that have power. Number one, way to deal with disappointment, let it out. Number two, watch how powerful this is. You have to shift your satellite dish. I've been teaching this for 20 years. You gotta shift your satellite dish to the All Things Are Possible network. You have to start looking for the good, looking for the break looking for the opportunity. This doctor's wife brought her baseball glove every day. She looked for the opportunity. How do I get through disappointment, Tim Story? Number one, let it out. Number two, shift your satellite dish. Number three, you have to make a choice to not stay stuck. What do you mean by that? Some people love to just keep on talking about what did not work. You have to make a choice not to stay stuck. So if you've been through things like all of us have, don't nurse it, don't curse it, don't rehearse it, disperse it, and watch life reverse it. I believe this is still going to be an amazing year for you. Some of you, your life's going to get so great, it's going to be weird. Thank you for the opportunity to talk with you today. I, I told you that dude could speak. Mr. Tim Story knows his stuff. Unbelievable job, buddy. Looking forward to you, to you speaking in front of 2,000 agents in Vegas on the stage in Pearl Theater inside the Palms. Truly one of the best speakers on the planet, if not the best one. Okay, the dude is amazing. Awesome job, thank you bro, appreciate it, thank you so much. If you watch this video and you wanna learn how to take a live call and transfer it from an opener to a closer, that video is for you, click on it and I'll see you there. Again, I'm not sure what time you're watching this video, right? Intro, expert, control, qualify, transfer. This is how to effectively transfer a live call from an opener to a closer.